All right, everybody, welcome back. Part two of the Goldfinger breakdown, review, hoedown, whatever you want to call it. Mark and I, we left off. We we're just about to talk about the uh, the brilliant theme song for Goldfinger, which I yeah, think started to set the standard too. Again, Goldfinger has so much massive going on. song. As soon as it opens up, you know exactly what it. it over time, everybody knows what Goldfinger is. Well, Shirley Bassey is iconic. Fantastic. Belt. She just belts it out. It's, it's I read a, I read a little uh, nugget about that. At the end, she holds this note. And she nearly passes out. Yeah. She nearly passes out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know you probably know these things. Um, but I feel like uh, there's things that are iconic with Bond films. Even the guy like me who doesn't know a lot about Bond. Things I always knew. Gadgets, the cars, the Bond girls. Yeah. Themes, theme songs. Yeah. Always had these fantastic theme songs. Well, this now, is the big. This is the big one. But this, is the, the, this is one that sets the standard for everything else that comes. It's massive, well, big, say, and bombastic. It, it, yeah, it kind of starts here, does it not? Because I don't remember. Yeah. Th- there were theme songs for Doctor No from Russia with Love, but this one, like the minute it started playing, I was like, "Oh, I've heard this song before." Yeah, it's huge. It's massive. It's a and huge then, song. Big, big, what is it? French horns or something. Massive, massive. You know exactly what Goldfinger is as soon as it starts. And then Bassey comes in and starts. She, you can't mistake Shirley Bassey. She's, yeah, and, yeah. She's amazing. Did, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Didn't she come back and do another theme song? She's done three. She did She did this. She did Diamonds Are Forever. And she did Moonraker in 79. Moonraker. She's yeah. done three. Yeah. But this is the big one. It's a massive song. John Barry composed it. And apparently, uh, folklore has it that the first person who heard it, the first person who heard Goldfinger when it was finished was Sir Michael Caine because he was sharing, he was he was renting the spare room at John Barry's. He'd been evicted from yeah. his flat and he was staying with John Barry and he played it to him. So Michael Caine was the first person. What a person crazy person. world this is. Oh, man. no, it's not. Because Michael Caine inter- intersect. in the 60s, was he? Well, he was get he was, he was, he was just you know, starting out, right? He wasn't quite a he star. Was, he was Zulu. He was um, what was he? Um, the Ipcrest file. I'm trying to think of Harry. Um, what was his name? Harry Palmer. He was the anti Bond, wasn't he? I kind of, um, I, I slightly enjoy Michael Caine. Hmm. Well, the um, Italian job at the end of the six. I mean, that's iconic. Just yeah. as iconic as the Bond movies. You know. Uh, of course, here in America, we're, we're used to so many. We, we make everybody a, a freaking movie star or a superstar. So when the, when somebody breaks out of, of Europe or England or whatever, Scotland or Ireland, and Kane was one I always got a kick out of. Connery, of course, is, is I, probably the top of the mark, I, I would have to guess. And then, of course, we get the Pierce Bronze and Bronson and... Um, well, Michael Caine, his Moore's man- mannerisms, his accent, all of it. He's, you know, again, iconic. Like he, he, Now, his accent's a little cockney. Am I correct? Am I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a little more, you know, I, 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 little, might need some subtitles when he gets into a, a good conversation. Um, okay, let's move on. So we got the, the theme song we talked about. Uh, I, I made a note. The intro, I know we're going to go back slightly. The intro in the movie, I mean, in the book, is slightly different than the intro in the movie. There was a uh, it's it's set in Latin America. Uh, I'll say Mexico, but I don't know that to be fact. But I don't believe it's the same reason. I don't think he's breaking up some kind of drug thing. And, and it's, I, a, it's a completely right. It's, it's the, but the it's, first it's, example where they have a, a mission that's not connected to the main plot yes. of the film. It's just to show James Bond as a secret agent, and he's breaking into a. I think it's a drug factory, isn't it? Somewhere in Latin it's America. Something like it, but it's it's real close. Like they stayed, they hovered yeah. around it. Yeah, but it's a good excuse to get him from there to Miami Beach, which isn't far away, which is where he gets he gets right. tasked with going to meet meet Goldfinger. So the thing that I that I thought was I, that I wanted to see in the movie that was different is in the book is that in the book, Bond, uh, someone uh, a businessman or whatever approaches Bond. This is what gets him to Miami in the hotel. He approaches him because he, he's I'm playing cards with this guy and I, I've met you before, Mister Bond. Their plane gets delayed is what it is. And they're talking about it. And he says, I, I'll give you $10,000 if you can help me figure out how he's beating me. At how cards. he's beating me at cards, yeah. And they skip over that whole conversation. And they really take that character out of out of, out of the, the movie. 
But the first time you see Goldfinger in the movie, he's playing cards against that guy and he's cheating because he's right. listening to Jill in his earpiece. So they, right. they connect it. Yeah. They address it, but they took out that little. And again, as a screenwriter, I'm sure they're like, look, we can cut this out. We don't need it here. Um, again, didn't change it a whole lot. But I liked in the book the build up to wow, because Bond has to watch him play and they're trying to figure out how he's cheating. And then he starts to put it together. They really just shortened that whole idea in the movie and got him right to the hotel. And then that whole setup is the whole scene is the same in the book. The, the girls watching through binoculars and all that. Although she in the movie, uh, what will jump? Well, let's get to the scene where they, because um, I love the line. Of course, J- Bond sneaks into this room, scares the crap out of her, but she's instantly is smitten with James Bond because he is a uh, the international sure. man of mystery. The way he struts in, it's a great scene. He struts in. Who are you, Bond? Yeah. James climb on, Bond. Climb yeah. on top of me. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah, and he ends up, of course, as Bond would. He ends up in bed with the with the uh, beautiful lady, Jill yeah. Masterson. Yeah, and she's stunning. Just Shirley stunning. Eaton is stunning. When, and, when he walks in behind her and she turns around and goes, who are you? And she's in that little black bikini and she's helping golfing a cheetah cars. It, she's gorgeous, yeah. It yeah. Made a very big impression on eight, nine-year-old me. Well, wait till we get to pussy galore. I mean, Boy, exactly. Jesus. I must be dreaming. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So Bond, of course, has her back in his room. And we it leads us to one of the greatest lines in the movie, I think, with the uh, Dom Perignon, Mark. Uh, if you remember the line, you're welcome to to uh, talk it, say it out well, he, he, he doesn't want to drink his Dom Perignon 53 above the, I can't remember what the temperature 38, 38, 38 degrees, degrees Celsius. Celsius. Right. It's as bad as, bad as listening to the Beatles without earmuffs. Yeah. yeah. So iconic that there was a little back and forth with the Beatles and Bond. Because they were both so big at the time. Massive, massive sixties. It's nineteen sixty-four. It's the Bond. It's oh, that it's Bond, Beatles, and Batman. Those are the three big things at the time, mid sixties. Yeah. Well, what speaking of about? Batman, off topic, there was was the Batman TV show big over there, like it was here. Oh yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, I remember growing up with Batman watching. Yeah. I mean, it can't be as all get out, but God, it was, was I loved it. Six, six, yeah, but it's all of that time. The Beatles yeah. are just breaking. They're over there doing your Ed Sullivan show. Bond's just becoming enormous. Goldfinger is the one that everything blew up with. And it's all, you know, great. Just a great, great moment. convergence of pop culture. Everything's coming together. Yeah. yeah. So he makes this great line about he, uh, which to me reads as very, uh, as you said earlier, a snobbery, very British, very. A, a, a proper gentleman wouldn't drink his Dom Perignon uh, uh, above 38. Um, and off he goes to the fridge to get another one. And then, and oh his, dear, look out, here, here comes Odd Job. And then we get Odd Job. Odd Job. What a, a fantastic villain Odd Job oh, he's is. He's amazing. What I like in the film is you only see, when, when, he's, when he's looking for the Dom Perignon in the freezer, in the fridge, you see him getting chopped from behind. Yeah. You just see Odd Job's shadow in the film it's just like it's it's great and there's that music it's, it's just like a what is it it's, it's like a little symbol or something just the music he's, yeah he's it's a, a deadly villain you can it, tell straight away this guy is seriously bad news he does that and and i saw an interview in that documentary i watched that bond said he goes i still think i have some pain in my neck from that shot yeah. chop, karate chop yeah. um so this leads us to one of the most iconic scenes in the movie um the gold painted lady mm. laying on the bed. Yeah. Which, so I looked this up just because I want to make sure this was the true thing. And it's, it, it, it's not, uh, they determined that she died from skin suffocation. Apparently skin scuff- suffocation is nonsense. It doesn't actually happen. It sounds great. You've got to leave a little bit of skin. You can paint yourself completely in gold, but you've got to leave a little bit of skin. To yeah, allow somewhere. Skin for- Apparently it's nonsense. It's not true. <laughs> I looked it, it up. Sa- it sounds great. It did sound great, and um, it's funny. Uh, I'll, I'll, but when point. they paint, when they painted her in the scene, she's lying face down on the bed. Apparently, they, they left a strip on her stomach. They didn't yeah. paint all of it. They, they, because they were still, they weren't quite sure. Yeah, they, they were nervous. Quite sure. Yeah. They shot that scene. They said it um, as quickly as they could. Yeah. But and apparently, uh, she had about three. They they washed it all off. It took for hours to get this paint yeah. off her, and then three days later, she had to have a Turkish bath to make sure she got all of it out of her pores. There was so much of it. 
I wouldn't mind right. having the job of helping get the paint off. Of helping show you can get a uh, gold paint off. Yeah. It's be- God, it's beautiful women. But when when he comes out and it's all lit and you can see it's gold, it's and and there's that just in the back you just hear it go ding ding ding, and it you see her on the bed and she's covered it. It's 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 amazing cinematic. Well, it's, moment. I, yeah, this it is woman covered in gold paint on a bed. It's a great moment. It speaks. I mean, even in the, in the picture behind you, the gold the gold. Yeah, that's gold. her. Yeah, and it's it's, a, it's a iconic image. It speaks so much without without uh, saying a word. Yeah, like you would know exactly where this this film. There's there was a yeah. there was a bad dude. He loves yeah. gold, and this beautiful chick's gonna die. Connery's James standing gonna... there going, "What the hell has just happened?" And he's like, he's on the phone to Felix, get over here now. And he's got he's, and Felix going, "What's the matter?" Because the girl's dead, and he goes, "Dink," because the one giving him the <laughs> massage. It's not Dink. No, Masters and Jill, and she's covered in gold paint. It's great. It's a great, great, great moment. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I loved it, and it's it's one of those things. Like again, it's been out there for for decades, and I'm just now seeing it for the first time. This is truly uh, people may not believe me. Mm. It's the first time I've ever seen this movie. 2023, mm. uh, September 1st, <laughs> late late in life, I get to this movie. But uh, th- that was a great scene. Uh, the so again, the uh, skin suffoca- suffocation is not a real thing. We breathe through mm. our mouths, not our skin. Um. Let's jump over to um, Bond is uh, back in England. Uh, I just have a question regarding Money Penny. Is is this an ongoing theme? Is he always going to flirt with her? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always flirting with Money Penny. They have this enduring because I, I enjoy it. Will they? Won't they? Relationship. Yeah, and it all. And I, I enjoy how M chimes in that he does. Yeah. He has dinner plans already. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he's listening in. Yeah. He but quite- I. I enjoy that little back and forth with them. It's yeah. a fun. And, no, but uh, that's an established part of Bond mythology: the the flirtation with with money, punny. Yeah, it's and again, brilliant. she's she's a lovely looking lady too. I'm yeah, not, she's great. Lois she, Maxwell, she's amazing. Yeah, she was she's, in all the Bond movies up until when was it? Um, eighty five. You took her, and then they replaced. Really? Her with, yeah, did all of them up until eighty five, and then when they recast it with Timothy Dalton, what was her name? I can't remember. Somebody else played. Her. Caroline so then Bliss. we go from uh, Caroline Bliss was her name. So a uh, Bond has uh, he's 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 skittered out the room. Mm. He has to stop over at uh, over to CQ. And then we have again one of the most like it's always Bond cars, gadgets, women, all the rest of it, some yeah. of the key ingredients of Bond. For the first time, you see that that car. I mean that Aston Martin. So is, in, is insane. The, the the guy's name is Q, right? That's what he's referred to as, right? Or yeah. is it? Because so, he runs Q, his his real name is 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 uh, Colonel Boothroy. But he, he runs, runs the, Q Branch, which is Q Branch, the, that's... which is the division in in the Secret Service that apparently, you know, in the war would supply for gadgets, gadgets and, and stuff. equipment to people overseas doing secret missions and stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's an old. Yeah, well, old, uh, I love how you have this scene as, and, and I love it because it, it it makes. But no it goes sense. down, and first of all, it's a parking meter that when you put the <laughs> money in, it spits out tear gas or something, and Bond just nonchalantly looks at it and just walks away. And yeah. there's Q. Well, and then you got the uh, the guy. At the, he's at the desk. He picks up a hand grenade, and Q just yeah. takes it out of his hand and puts it back. Yeah, because he's fidgeting with his his gadgets, and he's kind of as almost like a father to a child. Like, put that down. Yeah. Because that's you, what uh, the director said to him when they're going to do the whole thing. He said, you don't like James Bond. He always messes up your gadgets. You put all this hard work and effort into making this equipment. And then Bond goes out and just destroys it. So you exactly. don't like the guy. And that's where the antagonism starts. And I love it. comes this love-hate relationship right there. Well, and then I like in the background, you see the machine, uh, the bulletproof vest test going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in an open... Um, we've, not, we've not perfected it yet. Yeah, this guy's just sprayed him with machine guns. Open lab. Like you can't just you couldn't try it on a mannequin. You got to use yeah. it on a real person because, like, what if it doesn't work? Yeah. No, we just killed another one. Hmm. But then we. But Bond's got to gotta go off to Switzerland, find out how Goldfinger's smuggling his gold. He needs some wheels, so he goes down and gets his. He's usually driving a Bentley, but there's no Bentley. They reference it, saying, "Where's my?" He's, Connery yeah. says to Q, "Where's my Bentley?" And he says, "Oh, it's had its day. You'll be using right. this Aston Martin." DB5, and the camera pulls back, and there is this most beautiful, beautiful silver car. sports car. It's just stunning. It is a and, beautiful car, and it, it really is. I mean, it, I was messaging you. I was like, Mark, I said, I I think I want one of these cars. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, it's a gorgeous looking car. 
they uh I I did some reading up on it that uh the DB three was the original car they were in the in the book using. he goes down to the carpool because he's got to go off to Switzerland and, and shadow he needs a car he's got to go to Europe to shadow gold figure so he's got a choice between a a Jaguar yeah or an Aston Martin and he takes the Aston Martin in the book it's an Aston Martin DB three. I think it was a three. The, the, the owner of Aston Martin is called David Brown. So the cars were, were uh, named DB two, three, four, five. Yeah. So the latest one when the Goldfinger came out was the Aston Martin DB five. So they they put him in that, and it's a stunning looking car. It really it, it is. Really is. It, it is. Um... It's right. It's right up there. Enzo Ferrari said the most beautiful car in the world was the Jaguar E Type Jag, and that's probably true. But the Aston Martin DB5 is not far behind it. It's a beautiful looking. As soon as you see, you know exactly what it is. It's, it's classic. And, and you know, again, one one day we're going to do an episode with the cars, and we'll have a, our friend O'Ryan jump on break down. The I've, cars I've only ever seen one once on the road, an Aston Martin DB5, and it was painted in silver, and it pulled up at the traffic lights where I was in London, and it was only there for a little while. But it's just breathtaking to look at. So it was. A, it's a beautiful looking car. It's one of those cars you kind of nod to the person, like yeah, you, you just have complete respect like, for. It. I respect. Yeah, all. It's a be- you know, you know what that car is. You know what it represents. You're running yeah. it. It's a beautiful car. Well, so I'd read um, in some research before the show that uh, they weren't sure they wanted to give the cars to uh, the series to be used. They were hesitant. Oh, well, first of all, they were going to go for a Jaguar. They will use the Jag. Because that was the big car at the time. Jag, Jag pulled that. So no. give them an E-type Jag. So they went to Aston Martin, and the, they gave them two two production two prototypes. prototypes. They yeah. were still working on them at the time. Yeah, there were two cars. And they said, that's all we're giving you. And they had to pay for it, from my understanding. They didn't give them they to did. them. They, yeah. But they said that after, after this the, movie came out that they, gave, they never paid for another Aston Martin again. No, they, they, they were on board because it, I'm sure it just – it boosted sales, I'm sure, yeah. to a degree. You, you, you'd have to wait for years to get a silver, gray Aston Martin DB5. And is the DB5 yeah. that is that still produced now? Is that still no, regular? not anymore? They, no, that was it. Was it? They moved Gold on. Finger was 64. It was only a couple of years, and then it, the DB6 replaced it. I think in 1966 or so. It was only a limited run. I, I saw think they made, I think they only made about a thousand of them. There's not many of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I saw an interview with um, Connery. Who said that? Uh, he goes. I think there's five or six different people claiming they have the DB5. They have it. Yeah. He goes, the most be- was the, it the most beautiful car in the world, iconic car in the world. He goes, but they don't. Yeah. He said there were only two of them. There were two. There were two. And they know the, where they're at. The mythology of the well, one they James did. Bond's Aston Martin is would be a whole movie in itself. Apparently, one was stolen. One still exists. There's all sorts of history yeah. to the James. There's Bond's a collector Aston. who has one. Uh, I think he's here in the states. Yeah. The other one was bought by a collector, and it was on display at an airport. Well, it was in, in storage, and it was stolen from an airport and disappeared. And they rec- they they allegedly it's ended up in in the Far East. Somebody's yeah. got it out there, but it's disappeared. Yeah, they said it's it's gone. And they said now yeah. that was the other one from the show. There were two years. Yeah, in the that movie, was the main one with all the gadgets in it. And it's gone. It is. Yeah. We will probably won't see that for mm-hmm. a lifetime. But anyway, but when you on. when you first see it in the film, and that camera pans back, and it's and you'll be using a Aston Martin DB5. It's truly gorgeous. It's a great moment. Well, and let's talk about the gadgets. Like this is the first thing we see. So the the first, I think, the very first thing we notice. Well, so is in the book, he's driving an Aston the, Martin DB3, and he's got all he's got is a hidden compartment for a gun, and he's got um, heavy duty bumpers. I think that's it. But in the yeah. film, they've got lots of gadgets. Yeah. So we got the the revolving license plate, which was inspired by. Uh, was it Ken Adams originally? Was it him who got the no? The, the, tickets? The, 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 the director kept getting. A guy it's in London, Guy Hamilton. So he said, if I had, you know, if I had different number plates on it, I wouldn't get so many parts. Yeah. So that's where that, and then it just spiraled from there. I think his stepson suggested the ejector seat. Other people talked about the bulletproof screen and the tire shredding. And all. It yeah. all came from different sources. Yeah. It just so he had, he had the, uh, the ejector seat, which I, uh, the, the documentary I watched talked to the guy who heard the cut open. Cut the, the roof. Of oh, the, I had to uh, cut the roof of the Aston Martin. And he was like, yeah. I mean, everyone at the studio is like, no one wanted to do it. He goes, yeah. but we had to. Yeah. He's like, so I just drilled a hole in that roof. And he goes, of this beautiful, oh, exotic this beautiful car. car. Yeah. But uh, so this thing had the uh, had the machine guns in the front. Got any, so so Key's giving him the once over. And he's, he's showing that there's a center console between the two front seats. 
if you open it up, you've got all your equipment in there and you've got machine guns at the front coming out of the front headlight underneath the front headlights. You've got revolving number plates. You've got a bulletproof screen that pops up to protect the rear screen. If people are firing at you, you've got an oil slick coming out of the exhaust pipe. You've got tire shredders coming out of the rear wheels. Yeah. And, and a smoke got, screen. You've got a smoke screen and you've got an ejector seat that if your passenger is annoying you, you can just flick a button on the on the top of yeah, your gear. Blow the roof and <laughs> blow, blow the roof and engage the ejector. Engage and then fire the ejector seat. Whoosh out the top. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's the, the I love. So the uh the guy, the actor who plays uh, Q brand. Uh, Q, Desmond Llewellyn, lovely man, yeah. He was excited because they called him. He was done shooting all the scenes, and they called him back in. They said, we need you to – we added a, a, a scene, and we need you to explain the ejector button yeah. <laughs> and the whoosh. whoosh. But he's like, don't touch this red button. Yeah. And icon- he goes, again, another iconic moment. Don't yeah. touch- Why not? Because you'll engage and then fire. You're 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 engaged and then fire the ejector seat. And he's like, "You're joking." I never joke about my work. Double that, yeah, so that, I had that line written down. I was like, yeah. "One of my favorite lines is I never joke about." I my never work. joke. And then that becomes an iconic theme all the way through the films. He never jokes about his work. Yeah. Uh, so that that was just awesome. Mm. Uh, so then we we get to the uh, let's move to the golf course. Oh, where, all right. Uh, where James is going to accidentally bump into Goldfinger. Uh, this was a great scene in the book. I enjoyed this scene in the book. It was, it played well in the movie. Um, and I think you were telling me earlier and I, and I did see this in one of the, in the documentary that this is where bond or bond Connery, his love for golf came from this movie. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he had to the, play golf and he really took to the game. And there's then a big scene in the book Goldfinger, bond... uh, what's the name? Gert, uh, Gert Frobe. Frobe. Gert Frobe. He couldn't play golf. Sure. Never, never no. pick it up. But they said that. So any scenes you see, if it's someone swinging the ball, it's not him. It's not him. Yeah, he wasn't because he just because I couldn't just pick up the game. But the golf it's ball an epic game. Scene. He's, Bond manages to get a, a social meeting with Goldfinger at a golf club in Kent. <clears throat> they need to find out how he's smuggling gold. So he goes and has, a, and he manages to get a, a golf match. I think is it in the book? It's set at Sandwich Golf Club. I yes, think. it's set what in the book. It in is in Sandwich, which is my 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 father's family come from Sandwich, so I know Sandwich quite well. But in the film, it's filmed at Stoke Poges, which is just around the corner from London somewhere. Yes, but uh, yeah, he has a he has a golf match with them, and they play for is it a shilling a hole or something? But, but mm-hmm. then this massive. The Bank of England have given Bond a bar of gold <laughs> to use as bait to lure Goldfinger into, into a trap to find out how he's smuggling gold across Europe. So he's carrying around a bar of gold. We'll, we'll have to do the math. In 1964, this bar of gold is worth £5,000. I'm sure there's some... I else. keep talking. I think I have it here. Yeah, in my you notes. might have it somewhere. So the Bank of England give Bond a, a bar of gold that he can use to lure Goldfinger into, into his plan. So they're playing a round of golf. How much does a bar of gold weigh? Twenty-seven pounds. Yeah, it's quite it's quite heavy. But suddenly, out of nowhere, out of his trouser pocket, he drops this bar of gold on the ground in front of Goldfinger as he's trying to play a hole in a game of golf. Where does the gold come from? How did he carry that around? Yeah, I mean, so one of the like little flaws is yeah. uh, this thing would have weighed. Well, weighs twenty roughly twenty-seven pounds with a bar of gold weighs. That's heavy. And He's apparently had this in his pocket of his, his sport coat. Well, he just drops it on the floor. And the way, and then he just drops the, way it on the film there. is shot, it's like, well, you didn't step back to your caddy and your golf bag to get that bar of gold. You're talking to, to golfing and you just drop it on the floor. How did you manage that? That's that's always my muse. So, here's my note on the gold I found in my research. Uh, this is a little paragraph. So the value of a bar of gold would have appreciated considerably in the years yeah. since this movie was made. So? In 1964, a standard, quote, good delivery gold bar of 400 troy ounces at the fixed rate of $35 per ounce was worth, as is said in the scene in M's office, 5,000 pounds or $14,000. So what's this would now? be worth at least half a million dollars in 2017, yeah, 2018. Go. A standard gold bar weighs over 27 pounds, which would have been a fairly hefty thing to lug around mm. the golf course. Um, have you yeah. ever been, have you have you ever been in the presence of real gold? Not like that. 
I had a fr- I had a friend who had some I don't know, but in his safe at home he kept two bars of gold, two little ingots, decent yeah. size, not not massive ones that you see in Goldfinger, but two little ingots of gold. He just liked the idea of having some gold in his safe. Sure. Uh, he let me have a look at one of them once, and there is something quite magical about a bar of gold. There is. Yeah, you can I understand would... gold fever and all the rest of it. Oh, to absolutely. see gold, in, it, it is quite a magical looking substance, definitely. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I get Oryx's obsession, obsession with it. Mm. Uh, so there's a they're playing golf. There's a great scene in the book. It also, it's in the movie, but they've changed it slightly where um, they're playing, um, was it standard golf rules? I don't know strict rules of golf. I've, I've, I've played golf once. Yeah. And I was very bad at it. So apparently in, in if you're playing standard rules or whatever they call it, I can't remember the exact term, uh, you have to play with your ball. Yeah, you can't change your balls. And they make a big deal production of showing you the different names that they use. And in the book, they do the exact same thing. They lay it out specifically. So they're, they're feeding you a little bit of the foreshadowing. Yeah. And the golf ball switch in the movie versus the book is, is pretty close. Not the same, but it's pretty close. In the book, it's the caddy who does all the dirty work. Not of, Bond. Yeah. of switching out the golf ball, and mm. he, he lets Bond in. Isn't on it Ace of Ace of Hearts or something? Here's my Slashinger, Slashinger number six. Yeah, Penfold Hearts is the, is the, na- the name of Bond the plays Penfold. I think Penfold it is Hearts. in, in uh, Goldfinger, Slashing, uh, Slashinger. Goldfinger does a Slashinger number six or something. So, key to the scene is that they're playing for money. They're playing the, for ten thousand dollars at the end, and um, Bond hands him the wrong golf ball. Hoping that he doesn't pay attention because mm. he's about to lose the match. He knows yeah, he's he not going to win the game. Playing the wrong ball. He plays the wrong ball, and of course, at the end, he to die. Mm. Oh, he's I didn't. Is this your ball you were playing with? The mm. Slazenger seven? That's yeah. not your ball. You got or it six, wrong. whatever it is. He wins the game, thus irritating Goldfinger himself. But uh, it played so. well in the book, and it played pretty good in the movie. Uh, we then move on to Geneva. Let's, let's move forward in the movie Geneva. The DB five versus the Ford Mustang. Oh, yes. Which, that was the first time a Mustang was ever used in film. Uh, Ford was excited to put their car in the movie. Is that right? And they also donated the the Thunderbird that was used um, by the uh, Bond's cohorts over in Kentucky when they're in Louisville, or Fort uh, Fort Knox, and also the uh, Lincoln that gets crushed. That was a brand new Lincoln town car that they crushed. Oh, yeah. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But uh, so Ford versus the Mustang, Mark. I mean, uh, uh, DB5 versus Mustang. Who do you think wins that race? Well, <laughs> I'm going DB5. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, love, I love it's, a Mustang. It, that's that, that where that's going on. That's the Furka Pass in Switzerland. So he's following Goldfinger out to Europe to figure out how he's smuggling his gold. Oh, wait. Don't hold forget, on. Hold don't on. forget. forget he's driving the, G- the Mustang. It's Jill's sister. Well, we forgot to mention the GPS. Oh, it, yeah. He's, he's, he's put, he puts up. Well, after the golf match, he puts a tracking put, device in the boot yes. of Goldfinger's Rolls Royce. And he has, in 1964, a GPS system that yeah. is tracking the car. I forgot to mention that because I thought that was f- amazing foreshadowing for the future of the world. And uh, the noise that thing. I mean, you can get, I think you can get an app on your phone that makes the same kind of noise as James Bond's Aston Martin GPS. The noise, it, the, the, the bleep the that it makes, the ding. ding. You know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So he, follow, he follows him out there. He's tailing him through Switzerland. The Furka Pass is very beautiful. I've always wanted to drive I, out there. I definitely would love to do that, yeah, especially in a DB5. In a, in a beautiful <laughs> DB5. He's following got... He's following Goldfinger. And, yeah, it's um, somebody takes a shot at Goldfinger from a <laughs> from higher up. And she's using – you remember him from Russia with Love? And he's yes. got the, the briefcase. She's using the same little AR-7 armor light. Yeah, same rifle. rifle. And it turns out it's Jill Masterson's sister, Tilly, and she's trying to avenge the death of her sister by shooting gold. Yes. Uh, who, again, uh, uh, she is uh, uh, very easy on the eyes. This is she's lovely. Tan- she's Tanya Mallet, her name is. She's a beautiful gorgeous. girl. Yeah, the, beautiful. The, the, the note I made about that scene was um, I was curious how, why does she have a Mustang over in, the, in Europe? Product you know, placement, Andrew. Product placement. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make any sense because even if she. I mean, I, I'm sure you could have got a Mustang over there, but why would you, if you, if you're there to 
to track them or just it's rent a car. Would well, that would like, be the car you would have rented? A Mustang. Well, like you said, all the movies in the, all the vehicles in it, it they're all Fords. There's there's four all the it way is. through Bond movies. It's all there's all Ford product placements, definitely. Uh, but the thing I thought I, that really again, I because I have this weird, and I'm not the only person that does this, but I just things that I catch that don't make sense is she takes the shot and almost hits Bond. Which at the time, now again, I had, I'm still watching the movie, so I don't know why she took a shot at Bond. But no, explain. she's aiming at Goldfinger, but she 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 misses. Oh, yeah, he, she's a horrible shot. Yeah. What I find interesting is that the, someone shoots a gun. There, there are a total of uh, seven people in this scene. You've got Tilly, you got Bond, you got Goldfinger, and you got Odd Job, and then you got the children. Where he stops to buy some fruit from on the side yeah, of the road, that's true. Yeah, which, yeah. again, there are three little kids, four little kids sitting on the side of, the, of a curvy road with zero traffic, selling fruit. Not a great business model, but we'll skip that. <sighs> the gunshot rings out. Bond hits the ground because the shot has just been fired. Odd job looks up at it. Doesn't make any bones about well, it. Well, Oddjob seems to, in the, I know exactly what you mean. Oddjob seems to look up and smile slightly like he knows what's going on, but then they just carry on. And the kids don't make any. No, they don't scatter. No. Now, I'm not, I mean, I live in America. We have gunshots going off all the time over here, and I yeah, don't have that casual no. <laughs> attitude towards random gunshots on a very unbusy road, but I digress. Because that's what made me think that they were trying. She was trying to kill Bond because no, she's my job didn't seem to have any qualms. So she, my head, because again, I, I I'm still seeing it. So I don't know what's coming in the future. That he's not taken aback by it because he knows what's coming, hmm. but apparently he doesn't. So there's that. So anyway, I found that was a it, just the, again a beautiful, beautiful uh, drive. I would love to do that sometime. Hmm. And. Uh, let's see the Geneva must not uh, no one flinches. That's what I got for that. So, um, let's go ahead and call this episode at this point, Mark. And we'll pick up when we come back. We'll pick up when Bond uh, is at the factory. He's uh, he's he's dropped and caught. He breaks uh, into Goldfinger's factory, which is actually the back lot of Pinewood Studios. Yeah, we'll pick up from there. So let's go ahead and say goodbye for now. We'll pick up on our next goodbye, uh, part, Andy. part three. Stay safe over there, Mark. And you, Andy. Behave <laughs> yourself. This has been a Touch of Madness production. Brought to you by the creative minds at Tommy Twins Media.